obviously we got to ask the question, what was it like to work with Donald Trump for 19 years? I loved it. He mentored me, guided me, taught me. I really miss working with the guy. Well, the impeachment. Now, where, where do you think this is going? It was obviously going for, for vote in the House. Does, does anyone with, with a brain honestly believe that Donald Trump is a foreign agent and a threat to national security? Ridiculous. Don't just go through life blindly. Donald Trump, very controversial, would you agree? There's lots of times people say that I got this opinion about him, I got this opinion on him. Well, listen, you've seen The Art of the Deal, you read the book, The Art of the Deal, but this gentleman here worked with Donald Trump for 19 years and just came up with the book, The Real Deal. So, George Sodiel, welcome to the Seven Figures Club. I'm glad you're Thanks here, for having me, man. Awesome, Appreciate man. that, man. Great talking here. I'm so Thank glad you. that you uh, uh, stuck a little bit to shoot some video for our YouTube channel and oh, for our, our Facebook, uh, you know, social media community. So, obviously, we got to ask the question, what was it like to work with Donald Trump for 19 years. You know, I really, uh, I loved it. Yep. You know, there's a lot of people that they go to work, they do the motions, they're not really happy, they're just kind of living their lives. I honestly could say for years, I loved my job. I loved what I, what I did there. Mm -hmm. I loved the people I work with. Right. Uh, he took great care of me. He mentored me, guided me, taught me, um, you know, I really miss working with the guy. Well, uh, I still, you know, I'm still lucky. I've kept in touch with him. I see him pretty regularly, mm -hmm. but I used to work with him every day, man, and I, I, I miss that. And that, that's, you know, I feel fortunate that I, even for a brief part of my life, had the ability to say that, man. I, I love my job. I used to get up in the morning. It's yeah. great. Yeah. So, yeah. as an attorney, what was your capacity? What was your involvement there with him at uh, was I, it Trump International or was yeah, it? Yeah, I, I was uh, executive vice president uh, and counsel for the Trump Organization. Okay. So that was the uh, umbrella company. Uh, I did some legal functions initially, but my my primary role. Uh, I told a little story about it before. Mm -hmm. I was really heavily involved in golf uh, and hotel development. So I was part of a team that would actually go all over the world and look for suitable pieces of land to build and develop on. And then ultimately, I would frequently actually hire and supervise the entire process. You know, all the legal stuff with zoning and mm -hmm. planning and then actually um, handle the construction aspect of it. So there were plenty of days where I would start off, you know, in the morning in a courtroom uh, and then end up on the back of a bulldozer, you know, on a hard hat at the end of the day. Wow. Uh, great job. And then when he became president, I was made chief compliance counsel. So I was really, I, I kind of went back into doing legal stuff. And I was really the primary person interacting with the Senate, the House. Nice. Uh, I was handling all the emoluments issues, the conflicts of interest issues. Right. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned, my book came out in June of the, this year. I felt it was the right thing to do to go out and promote the book independently, but I'm still very much involved with the organization. Uh, I see him regularly. I'm helping him with the campaign, yep. uh, doing a bunch of things. His current campaign for re-election. His current campaign for, for 2020. Uh, I do a lot of writing, a lot of media appearances. I've written stuff in Newsweek, the Wall Street Journal, um, and a lot of other publications. So I'm still out there um, supporting the guy. Uh, I think he's a good president, he's a good man, and he uh, was very, very good to me. You know, you were mentioning on stage you were removing all your bias, you know, right. from, your, from, your, to. from your talk today, yeah, right? trying to, yeah. And, and so when, when people are looking at Trump and his contrast and his, his taking on of all this criticism, I mean, does he like it? You know, I don't think anyone, you know, like is a very specific word. Does he like being criticized? I mean, I don't, I don't think anyone likes that. He can certainly handle it. And I think the aspect of his personality, which makes him really suited to do his job, mm -hmm. is that He's a guy that really handles conflict and he knows how to manage it. He can put it where it needs to be. He can use it for his advantage. Uh, I think with a person like Trump, conflict motivates him, hmm. okay? A lot of people are fearful of conflict yeah. or they run, they go anywhere to avoid it. Trump is a guy that will charge right into the middle of it and I think conflict is part of what keeps him going. It's part of his DNA, yeah. if that makes sense. It's interesting, so his conflict is actually a motivation because he's got, he's got a point to prove. 
younger people now don't like to talk about conflict and they don't like to talk about adversity mm -hmm. and you know they think that we, we live in a world yep. of flowers and you know that's not reality life is tough and I, I think what I've found in my you know 51 years on this earth is times you're really having fun times that you're having pleasure those are few and far between most of the time you're working life is tough right. so you need to learn how to manage conflict that's just you know how things are that's part of life one of the things you said today I was really surprised to hear is that of all the business dealings that he has all over the world it's really run like a small family business it's run like a family company and you know those themes of trust okay loyalty those are very important and again right. I sometimes think that those are concepts that are dying. Yeah. You know, people just don't appreciate them anymore. I mean, you 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 served, you understand mm -hmm. right. trusting your brother, right? You know, having loyalty to your country. I sometimes feel that that these are concepts that are just uh, they they've become ancient. People don't appreciate anymore. People can do a lot of complaining. You know, people can stand up publicly and say I'm ashamed to be an American. I don't understand that. I don't get it. One of the things that uh, uh, that he was calling out, uh, President Trump was calling out uh, at that time, President Obama, about was not having a birth certificate, right? You know, birth room type stuff. So the flip side is because now he's open to an attack on the you know tax return right. situation and, and from a businessman, from an entrepreneur. I've got my thoughts. I'm curious. I'm just wondering, in, in your opinion, uh, why doesn't he just share his tax returns just like any other president did in you know, the last uh, thirty some years? Well, it's not a legal requirement. Okay. I mean, he's shared any financial information that he's required to. He has. But I don't think I'd want people to look at my tax return. I mean, would you, Matt? I mean, there, there's, especially, can you imagine how complex, I mean, it's a guy that has 500 different businesses. Do you really want every armchair accountant sitting down and looking at, I mean, not that he has anything to hide, but I think that's a very personal thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that in the wrong hands, people can make something out of nothing. So. You know, aside from the fact that he's under audit, just don't, I, don't, I just don't think it's a smart thing. I wouldn't want to put my tax return out there. And it's not a legal requirement. Sure. So I, 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 yeah. I think the whole argument about getting his tax return out there, it's just a red herring. It's just another thing they're throwing at the guy. You know, the whole thing about uh, the impeachment, uh, the inquiry, and, and, and them actually having no factual data, it's all oh. hearsay type of evidence. Uh, where, where do you think this is going? Is it is obviously going for, for vote in the House? It's a sad, unfortunate thing. Uh, you know, I, I, I made that comment, you know, during my, uh, you know, my little speech that watching these people over the past two weeks justify their arguments mm -hmm. where you're right, there's no legal grounds. He's the president. He can investigate anyone, even a political opponent, if he chooses to. And as the president, he sets U.S. foreign policy. But they are trying to tell us that this man is a threat, a, a threat to national security. That's a term that came up over and over again. Does anyone believe that? <laughs> I mean, look what this guy has done. Look what he's sacrificed. Look at his actions, not just his words, but look what he's done to strengthen this country. Does anyone with, with a brain honestly believe that Donald Trump is a foreign agent and a threat to national security? Ridiculous. It's you know, ridiculous. As, as an entrepreneur, as, as somebody that came from the military and now the veteran community, I'm seeing what he did. I, yesterday, he was again for the second day. I was there last year, but he was at the Army Navy again uh, yeah. yesterday, yeah. and he's celebrating Look at how the he was yeah. received. Exactly, he exactly. The guy. By the military community. Yeah. Everybody, love you know. Um, speak. Of, you know, and that's really my thing. Is there's such this misguided, painted picture in the media. I mean, do, do you believe that he's a threat to national nah, security? I don't think it's so. ridiculous. No, 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 no. I mean, just, just I, I, I find it difficult even saying that sentence because it's so absurd. But I think the good news, Matt, is that I think people are smart. Yep. People are a lot like you and I. They're seeing through this nonsense. They realize that this is a party. I don't know what happened to the Democratic Party. All right, it's not the Democratic Party that I knew. They got people flipping you know, to the Republican 30, Party. 40. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. They've lost their way. Okay, look what happened in the UK with Boris Johnson. Mm -hmm. I think the same thing's gonna happen here. Interesting. They may impeach him, <coughs> but he'll be the first president to be reelected after being impeached. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's wow. an interesting achievement. Wow. When, when, you're, when you're looking at the misguided, the fake news, how does somebody, if somebody's watching this right now, how does somebody process what's real news, what's fake news? I mean, do they need to become a better student? Do they need to understand the issues independent to come up with their own opinion? Because you can't really trust what's... It's very, very tough, and that's an excellent question. 
uh, it's tough. I mean, I, I, I can tell you what I do is I, I tend to watch everything. I force myself to watch networks like MSNBC and CNN. At the same time, I watch Fox, I watch Newsmax. I try to get as much information yeah. as I can. Uh, and I get to know the issues. So you have an intimate understanding of what's going on and you'll know when people are bullshitting you. Yeah. Lesson to be learned, don't ex accept everything that's in print or on TV as truth. Okay, you gotta question everything. And I mean, it's something that I'm, you know, I've got young kids. Uh, you know, I, I started to tell my six-year-old son, don't believe everything that you read. Don't believe everything that this guy is on TV is saying. Go out there, educate yourself. People have to educate themselves so that they're not, you know, lied to and treated like fools. Wow. Well, when, when you're looking at, um, when you're looking at uh, society today, you know, uh, you or family came here from Egypt. Right, Egypt uh, and, uh, and Scotland. I have an interesting... Scotland. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 crazy mix, and I was born in England, so... <laughs> wow. It's, uh, it's a strange, but yeah, we, uh, I, I immigrated here with both my parents. Uh, two years old, we actually arrived at, uh, by boat wow. uh, into New York. Uh, my father had an education, um, but he had nothing. How, so, did you, how, did, how did you and your family, how did you start forming your political opinion? You know, good question. Uh, you, you know, I, I'd be disingenuous if I didn't admit my parents had some influence on me. Sure. Uh, but I really, uh, you know, I've always been a person that has kind of craved information. Yeah. You know, whether it's news, whether it's academic stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I always did well in school. Mm -hmm. uh, I spent a lot of time in school at BA, JD, MBA, LLM. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I always kind of took it upon myself to investigate it on my own. And I, I still do that. I mean, you know, you know I want to buy a car. You know, I'll talk to people, I'll get opinions, but I'll do my own investigation. And I think that's what people have to do. Don't just go through life blindly. Look around, see what people like, okay? See what people don't like and, you know, take it in and learn. Formulate your own, you know, opinions. Don't just go through life like a stone. The foundation of those decisions is based on what you value, what your individual principles are? Yeah, I mean, a lot of, uh, you know, for me, uh, you know, I was raised uh, Coptic Orthodox. I'm a Coptic Orthodox uh, Christian. It's a very old church. You know, I'm a product of the Catholic education system. So for me, you know, the backbone in my life has always been, you know, the church yeah. and God faith, yeah. and Christ. And I still, you know, <laughs> we don't always act, you know, I haven't really lived an so, angelic so from conservative, life. Conservative, conservative yeah, we, we all do things wrong. <laughs> but, you, you know, the, the real, the, the basis of who I am is rooted in, you know, my faith in God. And it is always, you know, again, I haven't lived to the letter of the law like many of us, you know, we all do things mm -hmm. that we regret. But that faith has always grounded me and has always kind of driven me forward. And it's given me a lot of inner strength to face adversity, criticism, and uncertainty. When you're having people read your book, right, uh, The Real Deal, uh, what would you hope that they grab from? Well, I, I can tell you, I, I set out to write the book, you know, again, it was a combination of things, some personal reasons, but a lot of it was, this was a man that was good to me, this was a man that taught me a lot. This was a man that took time to mentor me. Mm. I, had, I felt an obligation to set the record straight. And I did it by just telling stories. And they're not just my own stories. I have 19, 20 different people from the company, all different levels, okay? Even I have a couple chapters that were really done by Eric, Eric Trump. Uh, wow. All telling stories. Because I think the best way, the most entertaining way to give people an insight into what a person is like is just say, hey, look, yeah. here's a story about what he did, you know, when we were doing X, or this yeah. is what how we used to build, or, you know, we were in New York and we got into a car accident, and this is what he did. So the story is, the, the book is full of interesting stories, which I think, I would hope that people who read the book, and I've actually had a lot of people say to me, I don't like him, I really despise him. But you know what, I read your book and I look at things a little differently now. That's what I would hope that people, you know, he never had an opportunity. People pounced on this guy yeah. the moment he came down the staircase, okay? He was a racist, <laughs> he was a misogynist, all yeah. this nonsense that I know not to be true. I hope my book goes a, a long way towards dispelling some of those myths. I mean, we actually, we struggled with a title. We thought about putting something in there about dispelling myths. I mean, ultimately, I think the real deal works. 
Um, but really, to answer your question directly, I hope that people get a different view of Trump the person. Okay, my book is really about him as a person. I have to talk a little bit about some of the politics and all that, it's unavoidable, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I really focused on what's the guy like. Right. You know, one of the ways that uh, you know, my wife is, you know, she's, she's learning her political opinions. Her father, her, her, her parents are very strong uh, Democrats, and obviously we're conservative, we're entrepreneurs, we're more right. on the capitalistic side of things. But there's nothing wrong with having them. I mean, sure. I, half my friends are Democrats. I mean, we got to go back to those days yeah. where we don't have to all be the same. Yeah, I can exactly. disagree with you, man. Exactly. I mean, that's just fine. Like, I mean, like Ellen know? and George Bush sit next together at the uh, Cowboys Nothing game. wrong with it, man. That, 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 that's, you want to talk about what America is made of. I mean, that, that's, those are the roots of America. People right. from different backgrounds, they have different opinions, they can disagree, yeah. they can still love each other. There's nothing wrong with it. Is the seasons of him doing The Apprentice, because I watch The Apprentice a lot, just <laughs> from a case, because I'm an entrepreneur, I'm just studying how to run a boardroom. I mean, is that, is that a fair representation, or is that, is that too much I mean, TV? I, I think it was, a, you, you know, the, the Trump Organization, it was a small you know, group of very tightly knit people. There was nowhere to hide. It was a results driven type of place. The, the, we didn't have a lot of the corporate formalities that exist in many places. You got the job done or you yeah. didn't. Yeah. It was that simple and I think The Apprentice kind of taps on a lot of that issue. So, I mean, maybe a little less of the drama, yeah. but hey, I want you to do this. You're gonna succeed or fail. I mean, that's how you were me measured. It was a meritocracy. You stuck around, you lasted there because you delivered or you didn't last. You know, I think you got a little bit of that on The Apprentice, so yeah. I mean, that's a fair... Uh, and I'm seeing how many different know, fair people assessment. got fair jobs because of it and how many people got their brands were built because of it and how many millions of dollars of charity was raised, you know, from the show. That's you right. Know, you, can't tell, you can't have an opinion about very, what people very, say, but uh, what people do. You know, it's a unique thing, Matt. I think a lot of people don't give him credit for this. Yeah. He achieved on many different levels. He was a very successful business person. He went into entertainment. He had a very successful television show. He wrote books. And then, oh, by the way, at 70, 71 years old, he became the president. <laughs> the highest achievement you could do as a politician. So this is a guy that has achieved in many different specialties of life at the top level. That's pretty unique. And he's still outworking everybody. He's still doing it, man. He's still, still doing it. Yeah, he, guy people works, can't keep up with his pace. He's the hardest working guy in the company. That's what yeah. every... Anybody that worked at the organization, he set the example at the top. And I think that's, I mean, you know, you're a CEO, okay? There's no better way to motivate the people that work for you than to show them, this is how I'm working. Yeah. Okay? Being from the front. They see you working like that, mm -hmm. big, powerful motivator. Awesome. Well, you've heard from George Soriel. And if you've been watching this and you've been having your thoughts, please drop your comments below. And it's a gift from me to you. You don't know I'm doing this. As a gift from me to you, I would love to send you, for those that share this the most, those that comment the most, we're gonna have a deadline set in the comment section below. But uh, make sure you pick up his book. And if you don't pick up his book and you're uh, watching his channel and you're sharing and commenting, I'm gonna send you George's book from, what's, what's the best way to do it? From your website or Amazon? Yeah, Amazon, uh, okay. Barnes and Nobles, it's, it's available everywhere. There so. you go, we'll do Amazon it. is probably the best deal. Awesome, so we'll make sure we get it from Amazon, from Amazon to your address. If you're the person we randomly select as the most frequent commenter and contributor and sharer of this interview, we need people to read this type of book to inform themselves and educate themselves before they jump to conclusions about their political decisions. So, George, I appreciate you coming to the Thanks, 7th Street man. Squad. Anytime, man, you call me anytime, I enjoy it. I love it, I love it. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to our channel, Seven Figure Squad. Make sure you hit alert to be uh, hit notifications, be alerted next time we upload our next episode. Drop your thoughts, drop your comments below. And on behalf of George, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.